Hello, welcome to Learn English and Practice with Marie. Today, we're gonna do Advanced Vocabulary Builder lesson number 30, where we'll go through 10 advanced words and talk about their definitions, parts of speech, and a couple of example sentences. We'll finish with a story so we can get some extra practice with those words. This is a series, so please subscribe if you want more just like this. Let's hop in. First, listen to me pronounce the words. Beguile, adumbrate, grandiloquence, raucous, nell, extraneous, odious, preclude, implacable, abhor. First, we have beguile. This means to trick, deceive. It's a verb. So to beguile means to uh, uh, convince someone of something that isn't quite true. Usually it has a connotation of uh, kind of using your charms or your wit or something about you to uh, accomplish some sort of agenda. Examples here are the cunning thief used his charm to beguile the security guard and gain access to the museum. The magician's tricks and illusions were intended to beguile and amaze the spectators. Next, we have adumbrate. This means to report or represent in an outline. It's a verb. So uh, this means to basically hint at in a way that sketches something out uh, to give almost foreshadowing of what's to come. Examples here are the dark clouds adumbrate the approaching storm, casting a shadow over the sunny day. The professor briefly adumbrated the topic in the lecture, providing a general overview before delving into the details. Next, we have grandiloquence. This means lofty, pompous language. It's a noun. And it's kind of ironic because this word is lofty and pompous language. It means being very verbose and using words that are larger than necessary or more complex than necessary. Examples are the author's use of grandiloquence in his writing created a sense of grandeur and drama. The motivational speaker's grandiloquence stirred up emotions and inspired the audience to take action. Here's Rakas. This means making or constituting a disturbingly harsh or loud noise. It's an adjective. So someone who's making a ruckus is making noise and uh, it's a very undesirable noise. So a house party late at night uh, by a bunch of hooligans, young people who are out there partying. Um, uh, someone who's older or doesn't like noise might say, that's a really raucous party, all right? Uh, disturbingly loud party. Examples here are the raucous party next door kept me awake all night with loud music and boisterous conversations. The raucous cheering of the fans echoed through the stadium as their team scored a winning goal. Now, the solemn sound of a bell, often indicating a death. It's a noun. so. You'll hear the term death knell as a kind of a cultural way of saying that something is over, something is stopped, something's going away. Uh, but literally, the word knell is the sound of a bell, usually associated with some sort of death or funeral. Examples here are the funeral procession slowly moved forward, accompanied by the somber knell of the bells. The tolling knell of the clock signaled the end of the year, marking the passage of time. Extraneous. This means irrelevant, extra, not necessary. It's an adjective. So it's something that isn't central or crucial. It's like an extra, and we could probably get rid of it. So examples here are the report included several extraneous paragraphs that were unrelated to the main topic. She trimmed the manuscript by removing extraneous scenes that did not contribute to the plot. Odious. This means extremely unpleasant as an adjective, repulsive also as an adjective. 
So something that's odious is just awful. It's bad. It's something we hate. Examples are the foul odor emanating from the garbage bin was simply odious. The novel portrayed the antagonist as an odious character who delighted in causing harm to others. Here's preclude. This means to prevent. It's a verb. So to preclude means to stop something from happening or uh, prohibit it. Examples are the closed door policy precludes unauthorized personnel from entering the restricted area. The early adoption of safety measures can preclude accidents in the workplace. Implacable. This means incapable of being appeased or mitigated. It's an adjective. So something or someone that is implacable just can't be consoled. They're uh, upset or they uh, really want something and nothing you can do is gonna satisfy them or solve their problem. Examples are the disease proved to be implacable, defying all attempts at treatment. Despite numerous attempts at reconciliation, their differences remained implacable. Abhor. This means to hate, detest. It's a verb. So to abhor someone or something means to deeply, deeply dislike or hate them. So for example, hopefully you abhor slavery, you abhor racism, you abhor nuclear waste dumping in the ocean. Those are all really, really bad things that someone could abhor. Examples are she abhors cruelty in any form and cannot stand to witness acts of violence. The community abhors the presence of drug dealers and actively works to remove them from the neighborhood. Let's do a review story where we can practice the words. I'll read it for you. Once upon a time, in the bustling halls of a prestigious university, there was a college professor named Dr. Lee. Known for his beguiling lectures, he had a unique ability to adumbrate complex concepts with clarity and precision. Students were often captivated by his grandiloquence as his words painted vivid images in their minds. One day, as Dr. Lee entered the lecture hall, he was greeted by a raucous group of students. Their loud chatter and laughter filled the room, creating an extraneous distraction. Unperturbed, he calmly began his lecture, his implacable demeanor silencing the unruly commotion. With a commanding presence, Dr. Lee's words rang out like a solemn knell of a bell. He spoke passionately about the importance of academic integrity and the need to preclude any form of plagiarism. His words resonated deeply with his students, leaving no room for doubt or excuse. As the semester progressed, Dr. Lee noticed an odious trend among some students. They would submit assignments with content that was extraneous to the topic, attempting to beguile him with empty words and superficial flattery. However, he remained steadfast and unwavering, refusing to be swayed by such deceit. Driven by a deep passion for knowledge and disdain for dishonesty, Dr. Lee established a culture of integrity in his classroom. He abhorred shortcuts and encouraged his students to embrace the pursuit of genuine understanding. Through his unwavering commitment, he transformed his students into critical thinkers, instilling in them a sense of responsibility and the ability to discern fact from fiction. So let me read these words to you one last time. Beguile, adumbrate, grandiloquence, raucous, now, extraneous, odious, preclude, implacable, abhor. Great job today. There are other videos just like this on this channel, so please subscribe for more. Also, I'll put playlists and videos right here. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you think about these words uh, down in the comments. Thanks so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!